Good morning boys and girls, my name is Teacher Khomadza. I hope we're all keeping well, warm and safe. It's a beautiful day to be here and I am so glad that we could all be together in spirit. And without wasting any time, can we please close our eyes and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for always keeping us in mind, for always being present in our lives. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. We thank you, O oh God, for being who you are and always letting us improve on ourselves in order for us to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alrighty, boys and girls, I hope we're all excited now because it's time to stand up for the Lord, sing and dance for Him. So let us do that right now. It's time for praise and worship.
Gentlemen, welcome to another exciting game of Bigger Bible Books! The fun and exciting game where you, the audience, must quickly decide by looking at two books of the Bible which book you think is bigger. That is, which book has the most chapters. When you think you know the answer, shout out the name of the book and hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you're still standing after all eight questions, you will have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion. Everybody, on your feet! It's time to play Bigger Bible Books! Which book is bigger? Genesis or Revelation? Time's up! Genesis is the bigger book with 50 chapters. Revelation has only 22. Moving on to the next question. Which book is bigger? Ruth or Esther? Time's up! Esther is the bigger book with 10 chapters. Ruth has only four. Here's the next question. Which book is bigger? Jonah or Jeremiah? Time's up! Even though Jonah is about a big fish, Jeremiah is the bigger book with 52 chapters. Jonah has only four. Ooh, this one is a little tougher. Which book is bigger? Romans or Ephesians? Time's up! Romans is the bigger book with 16 chapters. Ephesians has only six. Nice job if you got that one right. Which book is bigger, Ruth or 2nd John? Time's up! Ruth is actually the bigger book, even though it only has four chapters, because 2nd John has only one. Let's move on to the next question. 
Which book is bigger? Matthew or Mark? Time's up! Matthew is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Mark has only 16. Ooh, if you're still standing, that's very impressive. Only two more questions to go. Which book is bigger, Luke or John? Time's up! Luke is the bigger book with 24 chapters. John has only 21. It's time for the final question. Let's see who was really paying attention to these last two questions. Which book is bigger, Matthew or Luke? Time's up! Matthew is the bigger book and the biggest book in the Gospels with 28 chapters. Luke is second with 24 chapters. Congratulations! If you got all eight questions right, that is very impressive. You have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion. Thanks for playing, everyone. Alrighty, boys and girls. So now it's time to settle down, keep quiet, and listen to the Word of God. Let us make sure that we listen with our hearts open and our minds open. Be blessed. Good morning, boys and girls. It's such a great pleasure to have you joining us again this morning. It's always so great to spend time with you. And when we praise God and we thank him for all that he is to us and all that he has done for us, we give him all the glory. Before we get to read another story that I, we want to share with you this morning, uh, may we please bow together and give glory to God. Heavenly Father, Lord Almighty, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for giving us yet another day to bless you, Lord, to worship you, to give thanks to you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, we magnify your holy name again this morning. When we say this is the day that you have made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We rejoice in your presence, Lord. We thank you for the mercies that are renewable for us each and every day. We give you glory, Lord. We praise your name. Lord, we pray that as we are about to hear your word this morning, be with us, O oh Lord. Protect us, guide us. Give us the wisdom to understand what is going to be shared with us here and also be willing to go out and share with our friends. Let us, Lord, decrease and you increase while you take over the order of the day, Lord. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you. When you are ready, we are going to read one of my favorite, favorite psalms in the Bible, Psalm 23. Uh, this is one of my favorite psalms. This is my go between prayer when I need to talk to God every day. There's no day that go by that I don't go through to Psalm 23. I pray that you also find um, one of your favorite verses in the Bible that, that becomes your go-to the one that you go to when you need to talk to God, the one that you can hold on to and trust. So we're going to read Psalm 23 and we are going to take it from the International Children's Bible, the ICB. When you're ready, let us read together. A Song of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm waters. He gives me new strength for the good of his name. He leads me on paths that are right. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your shepherd's staff comfort me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, boys and girls. 
Like I said, this is one of my favorite psalm. This is David, the same David that we spoke about the other day. You remember? Do you remember we read a story of David and Goliath? So it's the same David who took down Goliath using the slingshot and the stone. Now he's a king. He's having a conversation. He has written a song to, to God. And he refers God here as the shepherd. And we all know what the shepherd does. A shepherd is one that takes care of his sheep. A shepherd is the one that who makes sure that we are being taken care of because you and me, we are God's sheep. And God ensures that all that we need is being taken care of. So David, now he talks to God. He says, Lord, you are my shepherd. All that I need, I have from you. I know that sometimes as children, we might think all that we need, we're getting from our parents. Yes, our parents provide for us, but our parents rely and trust God. They also go to God and ask God for the blessings so that they can also be able to bless us with all the things that we need and provide us for all the things that we need. But where do they go first? They go to God because they also trust God. We are all God's sheep. And the same God that when we go to him and trust him, that even if me and you could be that one ship that goes astray, like what we normally read, it says when David was taking care of his hundred ship, when one of the ship went missing, he left the all 99 ship and went and looked for one ship. So that ship at the time, it could be me and you, that we sometimes feel lonely, that sometimes we think there's no one who's taking care of us, there's no one who's looking after us. But God, as the good shepherd, he always realizes when one of us are lonely or missing, he calls you back, and then he puts you back on the right path. And he doesn't leave you just lay there. We know what the shepherd does as well. The shepherd needs to make sure that the sheep have been taken care of. Because why? You are one of his sheep and he ensures that he takes care of you. He doesn't just leave you there. He makes sure that he prepares a meal. It says here, verse 5, you prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. So what does he do? He protects you. He takes care of you. That no one, no one will come closer to you. Because God protects you. So while he prepares, while he makes sure that you've been taken care of, he makes sure that as his ship, just like in, in, in ship, that when the shepherd is looking after the ship, that he makes sure that they don't get harm. No one comes closer and harm those, those sheep like you. God makes sure that you are not being harmed. That even when it's so dark, when it seems impossible, when things are not going well, when... There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of challenges that are taking care in our country. And I know that as children, you are also watching what is happening around our country and around our nation, be it the pandemic or everything else that has been happening. But God, what God does, he protects you. He takes care of you. He makes sure that your enemies don't come closer to you. So that is the God that we serve. That is the God that we go to when we pray. So always remember that that he doesn't just leave you there again he pours so much blessing over your head it says you pour oil of blessings on my head he takes care of your needs he blesses you and he don't just blesses you he makes sure that those blessings overflows he gives you more and more and more of the blessings he pours oil on your head blessings upon blessings only when you trust him, only when you trust him. So go back and trust him. He will pour more of that oil over, over, over your head. And he makes sure that he protects you. So his rod and his staff is there to comfort you. In the midst, at the time when you feel like you don't know what's happening, you need comfort, run to God. He will comfort you. His rod and his staff are there to make sure that he takes care. He comforts you. He protects you. You are safe in his arms. And what do you do? Every time when you are in need, go back to God. He will guide you. He will guide you. He will protect you. Verse 6 says, Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life. Not sometimes, not whenever, but all my life. 
So goodness and mercy and grace and God's love and all that we need from God, he makes sure that he takes care of us all the days of our lives. What do you then need to do? You need to live in the house of the Lord forever. You need to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is where you are safe. That is where you are protected because God knows your future. God knows what you need. So if you in his presence at all times, dwelling in his house, dwelling in his presence, sitting closer to him, he will take care of you. He will take care of your needs. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will make sure that your enemies don't come closer to you. He will comfort you. He will bless you, pouring blessings and over. Your cup will overflow. Your cup will overflow. Just what you need to do is hold on to his love, hold on to his grace, hold on to everything that comes from God and dwell in his house forever. Live there forever. That's where you find peace. That's where you find blessings. That's where you find all the things that you need. That's where you find comfort. He comforts you. So in time of need, in times of joy, in times of everything that you have, go back and say, the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything that I need. He protects, he loves, he keeps you safe. Boys and girls, that's the message for today. The Lord is your shepherd. He loves you. He protects you. He takes good care of you. He would always guide you. He knows your future. So look up to him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being our shepherd. We thank you for the reminder of who you are in our lives. That though we walk in the shadow of darkness, in the veil of the darkness, we will fear no evil because we know that you are with us. You protect us. You're keeping us safe, Lord. Your children are going to go back to school. When they go back to school, Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. Guide them. And give them all the needs. All the things that they need, Lord. Protect and keep them safe. Spirit of the living God, we come before you. And we thank you, Lord. We love our children. And I know you love them too. Continue to protect them. Lord, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Alrighty, boys and girls. So now it is time to go. I hope you all had fun. I hope you all learned something. Please do share with a friend or a cousin or an aunt or your mom what you learned today. And without wasting any time, can we please close our eyes and pray? Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for today. I thank you, O God, that we are able to learn from our teachers, our parents, our pastors, and everyone else in Jesus' name, I pray. May everything that they teach us about you um, work in us. May we be able to open up our, our Bibles every single day and read about you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Bye.